So here we start with a pre-mRNA with a 5 cap to provide stability. And within this, there are exons, which are express genes, and an intron, which are non coding samples of nucleic acid that lie between coding regions. And so what happens is that SNRP consists of protein and SNRNA. And the SNRNA then binds with the intron exon junction by base pair nucleotides. So within this diagram, other proteins are then joined to form a spliceosome. And so what happens is that within the spliceosome, the SNRP acts as a ribosome for the intron to be cleaved out. And so it is then thus removed, leaving the two exons forming the mRNA with a 5 cap and a 3 poly A tail. And the 3 poly A tail is necessary and it acts as stability for the mature mRNA to exit the nucleolide through nuclear form. So the whole concept between this is to remove the intron out and thus leaving the exons together to form mature mRNA. Okay, so in this diagram, activated proteins are then binded to distal control elements, which make up a single thing called enhancers. And so there are three separate activator sites. And so a DNA bending protein then binds the DNA, causing it to form a bent shape. And so it allows the promoter, the activators, to be closer to promoter. And so the activator mediator protein then binds to it like this. And so this, the trans, general transcription factors of find along, along the site of the, of the mediator protein, as seen here. And so the RNA polymerase 2 then follows behind, forming, allowing it to, to be binded. And so this allows it to be in the correct position. So it makes it a transcription initiation complex, as seen here, the complete whole thing. And so this is a this is what allows RNA synthesis to be amplified. And so this is at an amplified level, whereas in this it would have been ha it would have been at a basic level. So in this diagram, it details the the regulated synthesis of repressible enzymes in TRP operon of E. coli. So usually TRP operons are on, which means that the repressor is off, is inactive. And so it binds, it cannot be binded to operator. So it does allow RNA polymerase to occur, allowing RNA transcription to occur. And so when that occurs, the polypeptide subunits are created and coded for enzymes, in this case, which would be tryptophan. So however, when there's an excess of tryptophan, Created, it acts like as a co-repressor, which means that it binds to the repressor protein, changing its shape and binding to the operator, and preventing RNA pol 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 polymerase to occur. So no transcription occurs. None of this will occur. So basically, the whole idea is that TRP codes for the, the repressor protein and the TRP operon. So in this diagram, it represents regular synthesis of inducible enzymes of the lac operon in E. coli. So usually the lac operon is off, which means that the repressor is active. And so while this is while lactose is absent, it is then able to bind to an operator. So then it won't be able to allow RNA polymerase from going down the chain. So thus RNA is not made at all. And so, however, when lactose is present, the repressor is inactivated by allolactose as seen here, which is an inducer. And so this changes its shape as seen here into a bent shape. And so it inactivates the repressor, meaning that it is not able to, to bind to operate, allowing the pathway to be open for RNA polymerase to travel through, shown by the green arrows. And so this allows RNA transcription to occur and for of those genes to mRNA. And so lag Z, um, codes for beta galactosidase, which is responsible for converting lactose into, glu into galactose into glucose. And so LACY codes for permease, which is a surface protein that codes that can allow lactose into a cell. LACA codes for transacetylase, whose purpose we do not know for now. And so um, LAC, going back to LACI, 
which is in a different position from the others, codes for repressor ro ro protein. And so the central dogma of this um, thing is that it goes from DNA to mRNA to protein.